Welcome to episode 5 of the Texas Rangers franchise here in MLB 23, the show. If you didn't watch the last episode, we did make the playoffs at 89 wins. We won the West, and uh, today starts the playoffs. First playoff series for the Rangers since 2016, and it is against the Yankees, who obviously have a star-studded uh, roster with uh, MVP favorite Giancarlo Stanton here in that four spot. Obviously, Aaron Judge last year's MVP when he hit 60 home runs. So our work is definitely cut out for us. Love the presentation of this game. Getting ready for the wild card series. And uh, we got Carlos Rodon against Nathan Eovaldi today. Um, Nathan Eovaldi, the Cy Young favorite. So a lot of award winners on this team. A lot of star power on both teams. I think game one is definitely a game we need to take advantage of with Eovaldi going. Because their second starter is Garrett Cole, our second starter is John Gray. And then it gets even more drastic. The third starter, I believe, for them is Nestor Cortez. And I don't know who would be pitching game three. We'd have to see how it all pans out. But we got the Yankees and Rangers, an old rivalry, back from the 90s and the early 2010s. And we're about to reignite that rivalry here in the year 2023. As you can see, a sold-out crowd here in Globe Life Park. Is it Globe Life Park or Globe Life Field? I always get mixed up because the old one was the same name. As you see, Aaron Boone getting ready to manage his squad. Garcia, Garver, and Brad Miller getting antsy. A lot of our players haven't played in the playoffs, actually. So Duran hasn't. I know Garcia hasn't. As you see, Carlos Rodon getting his warm-ups in with Eovaldi as well. Um, I know Seager and Simeon have both played in the playoffs. So, but yeah, Tavares hasn't, and Lowe hasn't either. So, and Josh Young, obviously a rookie. As you see, the season stats are Nathan Eovaldi, a 175 ERA. Like I said, he is the favorite to win the Cy Young. We will see after the playoffs the award winners, as this game is going to be with quick counts on, and the whole series should be in this episode for the wild card series. And we are underway with a 2-2 count. And the first at-bat is a strikeout for Nathan Eovaldi as Waldo Peraza misses the slider. And that's how... As we jump ahead a little bit, Eovaldi has run into some trouble here with runners at first and second. A 3-1 count. And that's hit in the air. It could be trouble for Tavares, but he runs back right before the track and he camps under it. Thankfully... For Eovaldi's sake, that definitely would have scored at least two. And uh, we'll head to the bottom half of the first inning. After a pretty productive first inning for the Yankees, uh, definitely made Eovaldi work and uh, got that pitch count up. As you see, Carlos Rodon on the hill for the Yankees. He was a Cy Young favorite as well. Uh, or not favorite, I'm sorry. He was in the Cy Young running. I believe he's going to finish second. If I remember the last time I checked. It was right at the end of the season. But that'll bring up Marcus Simeon to start off the day for the Rangers in a 2-1 count against Carlos. And that ball's hit the other way. It's going to be trouble as they were shifted over. And it's going to one-hop over the wall. Marcus Simeon with a leadoff double here in the bottom half of the first. Simeon obviously had a very good year. So on the last episode, he starts off the playoffs where he left off the regular season. So that'll bring up Corey Seager. By far our best hitter. As he'll smack a single into right field. They're going to send home Simeon. Judge has a cannon and the throw is not in time. And it's offline. The Rangers take a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. The 1-2 punch of Simeon and Seager is too much for Carlos Rodon to handle. And the Rangers are off to a hot start. They cooled off in the month of uh, August and September. And so it's good to see the offense jump back to a good start. Now the Yankees half of the second. They have a runner on second. And a 2-2 count to Trey Sweeney. I uh, can't say I've ever heard of Trey Sweeney, but uh, Volpe takes off on the pitch, and it's a curveball in the dirt, so he is in third with a stolen base. Anthony Volpe, known for his wild base running, and obviously pays off there with the ball in the dirt as well. And now the pitch to Sweeney is lifted into right field. That's going to be very deep. It's going to take it. An amazing throw from Garcia to get Volpe at the plate. The throw home is going to be a good one, but it's not going to be in time. Way too deep to throw him out. So the Yankees will tie it in the top of the second. Jumping ahead again to another Trey Sweeney at bat. 
after his sack fly, but this time he will draw a walk to walk the bases loaded in the fourth. Definitely the most trouble we've seen Eovaldi in as uh, Bruce Bochy will get the bullpen going. Uh, Perez and Heaney will warm up. Um, definitely going to be called in if this inning gets away, but it's on the ground to Simeon, to Seager. Trevino doesn't run well, and they just got him at first. What a double play by the Rangers' middle infield. If Trevino had maybe two more speed, I don't think he... I don't think he gets thrown out there, but thankfully, he is very slow. A, a pretty slow turn as it was a slow dribbler. Definitely a hard turn. Now in the sixth inning with Nathan Eovaldi at 123 pitches. Still only one run across for the Yankees, one run for the Rangers. An absolute pitcher's duel, and that's what you wanted to see with Eovaldi and Rodon on the hill. And a full count to Volpe now as he smokes a line drive, but way foul into the seats. And here comes pitch 125 from Eovaldi. And it is a taken slider. It's strike three called. And that would be the end of Eovaldi's day. He went six innings, seven strikeouts. Only the one earned. Now in the bottom half of the sixth, Carlos Rodon at 97 pitches. Also pitching a gem. Still with the only the one earned run. And the 2-2 count to Josh Young. Is taken at the knees, a fastball called strike three. And that would be the end of Rodon's day as well. Six innings, five strikeouts, only the one earned run. The impressive pitching performances would continue into the bullpen as we're all the way in the 10th inning as Judge smokes a single up the middle to give the Yankees two on, only one out here in the 10th. It's Jose LeClerc pitching for the Texas Rangers. And the MVP favorite, Giancarlo Stanton, is up. With the chance to do some damage, but he does have two strikes on him. And LeClerc will kick and deal. And he swings over top of the slider. Judge can't, or Stanton can't believe it. He throws his bat. He is upset. And that will bring up Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who they traded for this season. And he'll take strike two at the knees. As you see the left on base numbers, there's 16 total left on base this game from both teams. It's absolutely insane, especially with the star power on both of these offenses. And the 1-2 to Gurriel. And it's a swing and a miss. And LeClerc works out of the jam. A great performance out of Jose LeClerc to send us to, I believe, the bottom of the 11th. And it is the bottom of the 11th where it's one out already. Two strikes on Garcia. It's Jimmy Cordero pitching for the Yankees. As Garcia will foul that one off. Judge can't get to it. It lands in fair, a foul play. And uh, we're going to try the 1-2 once again. To Garcia. As Cordero fires. And that's going to be laced into the gap. It's going to be extra bases for Garcia. He rounds first and he's headed to second. The throws are going to be anywhere near in time. As the winning run for game one. It's at second base for the Texas Rangers. A good piece of hitting from Garcia to find the gap. Not a, not a crazy hit line drive. I think the exit velocity was only 92. But that'll bring up Josh Young, the rookie third baseman, with a chance to be a hero in the Rangers' first playoff game since 2016 as he'll foul off a fastball. And now the count is at 2-2 two, two, with one out. The pitch from Cordero is a, a curveball that's hanging. Young looks to be just under it. That is Harrison Bader, who has a good arm in center. To, uh, Garcia thought about tagging, but he'll head back to second. As there will be two outs now with the winning run at second base for Jonah Heim. Heim had a pretty productive season, only 55 RBIs, and he hit 250. But his defense is what he's here for. But we're going to need him to muster up some kind of offense. As the 1 1 is on the ground to second. It's booted by the second baseman. Garcia didn't stop running. He's headed to the plate to throw home. Not in time. The Rangers win game one. An unlikely turn of events. A pretty easy ground ball to second base, and he just boots it. And Garcia never stopped running. And the Rangers take game one in wild fashion all the way in the 11th inning. And the player of the game is going to be Adolius Garcia. Will Smith gets the win. As you saw, there are 20 hits between the two teams. Only three runs to show for it. Absolutely insane ending to this playoff game. But we'll continue in game two.
So hopping into game two, we're one win away from the ALDS. Last time we were in the ALDS was the 2016 season, like I've mentioned. And uh, got a difficult task ahead of us with Garrett Cole, who put together a pretty good year, very similar to the 2022 season. Um, low three ERA, a lot, a lot of strikeouts. And a uh, pretty normal Garrett Cole season. I was actually looking at his contract. I did not realize he's getting paid like $33 million for the next however many years. It is a lot of money. And um, we are looking to have a better offensive performance than last night for sure. Only scoring the two runs. Um, thankfully, our pitching staff only gave up one run, obviously resulting in a win. I see John Gray, who was hurt in the middle of the year, but overall had a pretty good year. Uh, only... I think he had a low 3 ZRA too, very similar to Garrett Cole's numbers. Not as many strikeouts, and definitely not as much money. But let's get game number two underway. There's John Gray's numbers. Yeah, 313 ERA, 12-8 record. Really good season out of Gray. Uh, kind of walks are kind of high, actually. And there's a full count to Aaron Judge, and he hits it on the ground, and Nathaniel Lowe flips it to Gray, and that is a 1-2-3 first inning for John Gray. Good start for the Texas Rangers. you love to see it. As they will have Simeon, Seeger, and Lowe leading off for the home side of the first. As here's Garrett Cole. You can't see his numbers. I don't know why they didn't pop up. But very similar numbers to John Gray, like I mentioned a few times. Uh, low three ERA. Now there's two outs here in the bottom half of the first. A 2-2 count. And that's flared up into left field. Gurriel Jr. is going to track it down. So three up, three down on the Rangers side of things as well. Jumping into the top of the fourth with a runner on second. First sign of trouble for John Gray. There is two outs. Trying to work out of it. Two strikes on Guriel Jr. And that's a rope into the left right field or center right field gap. Tavares going to try to get in quick, but the run will score easily. Because that's an RBI double for Lourdes Guriel Jr. And John Gray gives up the first run of the game. Still no runs for the Rangers. The Rangers offense has been sluggish this whole season or series. Which is not what you want to see. Is that's a slow dribbler in front of Heim. He'll make the throw. A good play from Heim will get out of the fourth. But the Rangers do or the Yankees do score. The Rangers are down one nothing. And now in the bottom half of the sixth, still no runs for the Rangers. That's gonna be hit sharply on the ground to first. And that is out of the, he is out of the inning. You'll see on the box score, no hits through six innings for the Rangers. And checking back in here in the bottom of the seventh with two outs, one two count. Nathaniel Los hits a foul. And we'll try the one two once again. Here it is. And he swings and misses an ugly swing on a slider that probably would have hit him. An absolutely terrible swing. No hits. And we'll check in once again the next inning in the bottom of the eighth. No base runners for the Texas Rangers. Until now, Josh Young gets hit in the thigh. He'll go to first. Still no hits for the Rangers, but they finally have something cooking with a runner on. Still only down to one. Uh, John Gray did not uh, let us down. He pitched until the sixth or seventh, I don't remember. But he pitched fantastic. And now we have a runner on. Trying to tie this game here in game two. Definitely don't want to go to a game three where any kind of fluke thing could happen. They got Clay Holmes warming up in case Garrett Cole does run into any trouble. And the 2-2 two -two count to Jonah Heim. Is swung on and oh, he just fouled it off. I thought that was a strikeout. Garrett Cole just now at 106 pitches. Doesn't sign, show any signs of slowing down. As an ugly swing at a knuckle curve, Jonah Heim goes down on strikes. Garrett Cole has a no-hitter through seven and two-thirds innings. Now to bring up Ezekiel Duran. Trying to get something with that runner on first. As that's a rope into left field, but Gurriel has it. And that is the end of the eighth inning. No hits for the Rangers here in the wild card series against Garrett Cole. Absolute master class from Cole so far. And now in the top half of the ninth, the Yankees do have a runner on second against Andrew Keeney. It's on the ground to Seager, thrown to first. In time, there's two outs, trying to hold this to a 1-1 one -one 
lead where one swing of the bat could change the game at any point. And that'll bring up Trey Sweeney, who hits it up the middle. They're going to send him on to Varus. We've seen this before in the franchise. The throw home is not in time. 86 speed will get it done. And the Yankees take a 2 to nothing lead against the Rangers. We've seen Tavares throw people out at home twice this seat, uh, this franchise on plays just like that. But this time the 86 speed is just enough to score a run. Now again here in the top of the ninth with two outs. And that is a strikeout. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. Rangers down 2 nothing, And Garrett Cole pitching a no-hitter. There he is psyching himself up. And he's going to try to make history. Ten hits for the Yankees. Only two runs to show for it. Both teams are leading men on base both games. Obviously, the Rangers only left one man on base so far. As that will be fouled off by Brad Miller. Brad Miller, not sure why we didn't trade for a DH. Because Brad Miller is getting at-bats against Garrett Cole in the playoffs. As Brad Miller swings through his slider, that is a strikeout. And he has a no-hitter now, obviously, through eight and a third. It's up to Larry Tavares and Marcus Simeon now to do anything for the Rangers' offense. It's a 2-1 count to Tavares. As he takes ball three. A walk here would set up the home run to tie. And that would be ideal. And here comes the 3-1 from Garrett Cole. And he takes ball high. So the tying run will come to the plate, like I mentioned. It's going to be Marcus Simeon, who's not played great in the playoffs, but he's played okay. He is definitely due for something crazy. As he hits it on the ground, a shortstop flips to second, on to first. And the Yankees take game two on a no-hitter from Garrett Cole. He completes the no-hitter. He joins the history books of playoff no-hitters. I think there's one, and I think Roy Halladay, if I'm not mistaken. The Yankees mob him on the field. Can't celebrate too hard, though, because game three is tomorrow night. And uh, Aaron Boone's excited. A really rough outing for the Rangers offense, obviously. Never seen him get dominated like that throughout this franchise so far. Only five strikeouts for Garrett Cole, which is interesting because John Gray had eight. Um, I did change the settings this game from competitive to simulation. I felt like I was striking him out too easy. And no offense to John Gray, but we'll pick it up for game three. So before we head into game three, I wanted to look at our pitching staff and see what kind of of start we can get. We can either go Danny Duffy or Dane Dunning. Or we could go Perez. I'm, I'm really torn. Dane Dunning has better hits per nine. And a 4.63 ERA this year. Duffy pitched good, but he only pitched nine games. And then Perez pitched pretty bad. I think we go Dane Dunning. And we're going to quick manage this and hop in when we can. Leave it more up to the sim. I need to figure out sliders and stuff like that to make it more. I don't want it to be fully based on my gameplay because I obviously I'm not very good. And so these one run games and stuff like that. I'm, but I'm like too good at pitching. So we're going to quick manage it and uh, we'll hop in if we need to. It'll be Dunning versus Cortez. Um, Eovaldi will definitely be ready to pitch today though. So. Um, you got a bruised arm. <laughs> yeah, a bruised arm. All right. Um, yeah, I like Perez then. Let's go Perez. And all hands on deck. This is a must-win game. Play ball. <sighs> okay. That's not a good start. No, oh, Pasquitino. You're out. Oh, my gosh. Three. That's horrible. Three. Three. And we go one, two, three. All right, get him out. Get him out. Let's go, let's go. Get him in there. Now pitching for the no, Eovaldi! What is happening? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we're getting obliterated. Get him out, get him out. I don't even know who to go to. We're clerk. We're down seven. We're down seven, guys. Oh my Three. gosh. This is not what I expected. Three. It's only oh, the fourth four. inning. Three. We have time to come back. Take your base. Ball four. It is not looking good, though. All right, a double for Duran. We got one run. Here we go. We got two on. 
There's another run. Well, clerk's pitched too long, probably. So let's go ahead and go Chapman for the sixth. Now pitching for the Rangers. There you go, Chapman. All right. Let's get another two runs. Or we'll go one, two, three. Solo home run for Stanton. What is happening? All right. Laoti. All right, let's hop in. Oh, man. We, we're about to have the best comeback of all time. Or our season Welcome is over. In. John Marcus Simeon. Let's get a rally going. They have Ron. I have no idea. Mariachio Ma or something like that. You take ball one. We got Low Isaac and Cordero warming up. We'll probably go Will Smith next inning. No! What is happening? <laughs> And it's a double play, an easy double play at that. Oh, man, we should not have quick managed. I was saying I pitched too good, so then we just gave up, like, seven, eight. Yeah, he's tired, and I figured. Let's go with some All right, bottom eight. Come on, Seager. Yeah, this is over. We'll hit the bottom of the ninth. <sighs> they got Loisega out there. Down six. It's going to take not even a miracle at this point. Something more than a miracle. Okay. I uh, I got a little antsy. Oh, man. I definitely thought we were going to win round one at least. A real drop off from the midway point. Or not the midway point. A little after the midway point. We had like a nine lead. Nine game lead. We lost a bunch of games and then come in here and do this Dane Dunning getting hurt before the game and that is a strikeout for Jonah Hunt oh, game one was such a close game game, game two was a close game too but we just could not hit the offense went silent and that's a beautiful pitch frozen and you can see the the building clearing out. That's a cool touch. Man. I can't I can't believe it. I'm actually like speechless. I did not think eight to two would be the result of a quick managed game. Uh, that's a strikeout. I'm kinda just flying at these pitches because how are you gonna come back from six? Mitch Garver, who this might be his last at bat as a ranger. But he'll hit. Nope. Yep, that's why. The Yankees, man. Long-time rival of the Rangers. And it's going to continue here in 2023. Yeah, just swing at everything. It's all right. Just get this game, just get this game out of my face, and we'll head to the offseason. Oh, man. We'll do a year recap as well in this episode. And there it is. The Yankees will move on to the ALDS, and the Rangers win game one. Lose back-to-back -back games. Don't score a run. Since I was playing. That's insane. We, I, I didn't score a run since the first game. That's very unfortunate. But good for the Yankees. Um, I think we're going to be okay. Our core is pretty young. I think Simeon's the oldest player in our core. He's only like 31. Uh, we get DeGrom back next year. And we're going to have a pretty productive free agency. I have a few guys in mind. Yeah, Perez went one in a third inning, four hits, three runs. Yeah. He will not be coming back. Um, as much as I love Perez in real life. Well, you can bench him because we lost. That is so unfortunate. Let's go ahead and see what awards we won, though. All right, so MVP. Oh, wow. Okay, so the MVP did not go to Giancarlo, like I had said. Oh, I said he was the favorite. I, I thought he won. But it goes to Mike Trout, who has a, uh, another amazing year. How many stolen bases? 15. Nice. Jo what? Joe Ryan wins Cy Young. No way. Look, you've only had a better year. Oh, my gosh. Is everything going downhill? Did we win Rookie of the Year at least? Okay, Josh Young, Rookie of the Year. Oh, man, the Cy Young one hurts. I think Eovaldi had a better year. 
Oh man, that's crazy. I think, yeah, I think Evaldi got snubbed. That's terrible. Any other awards we have? Heim almost. Another one. How did, how, how did Heim not win Gold Glove? They had the same fielding percentage, and he has more putouts and more assists. I have no idea how he didn't win Gold Glove. That's okay. Simeon down here. Anybody else? Doesn't. Oh, Simeon won uh, Silver Slugger. Nice. 29 home runs. Not to be that guy, Brandon Lowe had a better year. <laughs> but I'll take it. And that is it. So a pretty productive first season. Uh, we definitely fell off there at the end. But that will be it for this season. Uh, let's, let's see who won the World Series. Let's do that. Let's see who's in it. It's New York and L.A. That would be an insane World Series. And the Yankees, went, hey, we, we lost to the eventual World Series champions. What are you going to do? You know, nothing we could have done. Uh, it's very unfortunate that we lost. I hate to go out that way. But thank you for watching. Next episode will be the off season, the whole off season in one video, obviously. And I'll see you guys in episode six. Peace.